In this snippet, I'm going to show you how to build an RSS reader in a single flat file with Alpine.js. And it doesn't look great at the moment, but I'll leave you to go ahead and style this up. The most important thing is that we get all of the information that we need uh, from all of our sources. And we're using two sources here, the CoCourse RSS feed, which gives you the latest uh, courses from CoCourse.com and also from the Alpine.js weekly newsletter as well. So just via this link over here. So they're the two sources that we're using. We're just outputting these in the date that they were published, which is of course really important. Let's head over, start from scratch and get this built out. Okay, so we're starting out with a single uh, index.html file. In fact, that's the only thing we're gonna do because we can put everything inside this one file just to keep things nice and neat and tidy. Of course, the first thing we want to do is pull in Alpine.js. So we're going to head over to the Alpine GitHub page and we're going to come down and just grab the latest version. So Alpine is designed to be just included in a script just to make things really, really simple. So let's head over to the text editor and let's just pull this in in the top of our head just inside of here, great. So I'm gonna define out a really simple single component in here. If you've not worked with Alpine yet, we do have a course on learning Alpine, but most of this will be pretty self-explanatory and I'll speak about what we're doing as we go. So what we need in here is an xData attribute and this contains all of the things that we have within this component. So this is the scope of the component. So this will contain things like the actual feed itself, the sources that we want to pull with and any JavaScript methods or functions that we're going to use to help us along the way. Now rather than do everything inside of here, what I like to do is extract this out to a function which I can just define somewhere on the page. It doesn't really matter where we put this and that just allows us to keep things things neat and tidy and if you are used to working with a framework like Vue.js this will make a little bit more sense to you. So from here we just return an object and then that object gets placed inside of the scope within the component that we're building. So for example just to test that Alpine is working I'm just going to output my name inside of this component. To do that we use a element on uh, an HTML well an HTML element and then we just use the X text attribute to read from any of the properties that we have inside of this object in X data. And if we head over to the browser and check this out, you can see that sure enough my name is out on the page. So nothing special at the moment, but if you get to this point and you do want to follow along and you haven't worked with Alpine, we know now that everything is working. So we can get rid of this name property because of course we're not going to need that. Now the two things that we are going to need are a list of feed items. These will be parsed feed items. For example, we'll have objects in here with the title of the feed, potentially the description of the feed, of course the URL to the feed item and the date that was published as well. And what we'll also have is a list of hard-coded sources. We're making this really, really simple. It's just a personal RSS reader. So what I'm gonna do is grab the two sources that we spoke about earlier. First of all, the uh, source from the codecourse.com website that just gives you the late, latest list of courses that we have and also the RSS feed for the Alpine Weekly newsletter. So now that we've got these two, we need a way to just start to make a request to grab these two URLs. We're going to do this all in one hit. We're not going to wait for each one to finish. We're going to make a request to each of these and we're going to fetch the data and parse it. Now to do this, we need some kind of initialization for this component. So we want something to happen when this component is initialized. And what we can do is actually provide an X init attribute. And we can either do something in here or we can reference some kind of method. So I can reference an init or mounted method. What that allows me to do is inside of here, create that out and then do something when this component is initialized. So when it's attached to the DOM and we're ready to start adding and rendering items. So if I just output done here and we come across and just open up our console real quick, you'll see that we get the text done output to the console, great. So that's working, but now is the point where we want to iterate over each of our sources and we want to grab them. Now, iterating over these sources is pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna use a JavaScript for each loop. You can use a for loop here, but uh, the order of this doesn't matter so much. And I'm also not really concerned at this point about the performance of this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use a for each loop on here really quickly. And when we do that, we get each of the sources in here, and then we can make a request to get the source. So why don't we introduce another function in here? 
So let's create out a get function, which takes in the source, the source URL, and then makes a request to get back that information. Now parsing RSS is an absolute nightmare. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull in this RSS parser package, which will allow us to send a request to the RSS URL and get back a nice object with all of the information standardized really, really importantly that we need because some are RSS feed standards change. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this in from JS Deliver since we're not working with Webpack and we're not importing things. So I'm gonna come over to here. I'll leave a link for this in the course links for you. We're gonna come over to the distribution here and we're gonna pull in the minified version. So let's copy this URL to the clipboard. And really simply, we just want to come over and just below where we've included Alpine, we're gonna go ahead and just pull that source into here. And that is it, that is on the page. Now we need to new this up uh, and we can do this just above our setup method, don't, just so we don't new it up for every single iteration of our sources. So I'm just gonna call this a parser. And this is globally now available as RSS parser. So let's pull this in and then inside of get, we can use this to get the source, but we need to invoke this first. So let's go ahead and invoke that passing through the source. And that's pretty much all we want to do for now. Okay, so let's have a go at actually using that parser to grab the URL. So let's access the parser. Let's use parse URL just here. And let's paste in or write in the source that we get through to this method. And basically in here, we get either an error if something went wrong, and then we get the actual feed itself. So the entire feed that we're reading, which will contain each of them items. So what we can now do with that done is just log out the feed and just see what we're working with here. Uh, if we do get an error, what I'm gonna do is just silently fail. So I'm just gonna say, well, if we get an error, just do nothing for now, because we're not really bothered too much. We'll just silently fail and not show them items on the page. So if we come back over to our page here and give that a refresh, sure enough, you can see that for each of the sources that we're using, we get a list of items. And you can see the items just inside of here. So these are the items from the cocos.com website, and these are the items from the Alpine newsletter. Great. So now what we can do with these is standardize them once again, or rather just cut back on the amount of data we have, because we've got quite a lot of data inside of each of these items that we potentially don't need. And what we also want to make sure is the date that we get back from here is a JavaScript date object or a moment object, whatever package you want to pull in, just so we can order these by latest, because at the moment they're going to be grouped by the actual feed itself. So what we want to do in here is iterate again over each of the items. So again, I'm going to use a for each loop in here. You can use a for if you want to. And for each of these, I'm just going to call these entries. We're going to go ahead and invoke another method called add to feed. And we're going to pass that entry through. Remember now this is just a standard object with all of them properties we just saw. So let's come down here and create that add to feed function out. And all we want to do in here is take in the entry and just return a new object, giving us just the data that we want here. So for example, the title uh, and all that kind of stuff. But actually, we don't want to return this. We want to push it to our feed items. So let's go ahead and access our feed, which is just that empty array up here. And let's push to that, giving in a new object. And the title here is just going to come from item, or in this case, entry title and we also want the author of this potentially but let's leave that out just for now we definitely want the link so let's go ahead and grab the link in here and we also want the date as well and like i said with the date that we get back let's just check this out we get this pub date which is just a date string so we want to take that date and we want to wrap it in a new date object in JavaScript like so. So now that we are adding each of these entries to the feed, let's just, as we go, just so we can see what's going on here, log out the feed itself, just so we can see that this is working. So you can see here, we get a proxy object just here, probably would be a good idea to go ahead and log this item out, just so we're seeing, we see we're getting the right information. So let's log this out so it's just a little bit clearer. And let's go give that a refresh. And there we go. So these are each of our items with the date in here. It says invalidate at the moment because I've used the wrong property, but we'll fix that up. We've got the link in here, which is great, and the title as well. So this is actually rather than date, it's pub date. So let's change that over, give that a refresh. And there we go. Great. So we've got a date object in there as well that we can use to format and order. 
So let's just fix that date up in here where we're pushing that object and we should be good. Now what we can actually do finally is start to output the items on the page. They're not going to be in order just yet, but we'll look at doing that in just a second. So to iterate over, we're going to use a template um, and we are going to use X4. We're going to reference uh, entry in the feed. So we're just going to call each of these feed items entry. And we don't have a key here just at the moment. We don't have a unique identifier for each of these items. So what I'm actually going to do is bring in the index of these and I'm going to key each of these by the index like so just to make things a little bit more efficient for Alpine to update. So inside of the template then, this needs one root element. So we're just going to output a div and we're going to have a span in here with some information. So let's just output, for example, the title, just so we know that this is working. Let's come over and give that a refresh. Sure enough, we get both of the feed items inside of there. Great. So the next is the link. So we want just an anchor for this, but of course we want to bind the link to the href. So when we click it, we go over to that location. So let's use X bind and bind in the href attribute to the entry link. And then we also want some text for this element as well, which is of course just the entry link so we can actually see where we're going to. So let's give that a refresh and there we go. There are each of the links that we can click through to go and view the, in this case, the um, Alpine.js newsletter. So now that we've got that just below this, I'm gonna go ahead and output a formatted version of the date. So let's again use a span with X text and let's grab the date. Remember that's now a JavaScript date object. You can just output that on its own. It will use the two string method to just cast the normal string. Uh, but in this case, we want to use maybe a method like to date string just to make this a little bit more human friendly. So Friday 1st of May 2020, that looks good to me. OK, so we've got all of our items here, but at the moment they're not in order of published date. All of these ones here up to here are the Alpine JS weekly newsletter and all of these are the latest codecourse.com courses. So there's a couple of ways that we can do this. The first way is just to create out a normal function. So let's go ahead and create a sorted feed. If you're used to working with Vue.js, you'll know that we have computed properties and this would be the perfect candidate for a computed property, which would automatically return to us a new value based on any items that are added. But for this uh, case, since Alpine doesn't have computed properties, we're just going to use a, a, a function here or a method and we're just going to invoke this instead of this feed here. So instead of directly referencing the array, we're going to reference this function. And to sort this, we want to go ahead and use just the JavaScript sorting uh, function. We get the first and the second in here. And to sort this, we're going to, of course, sort this by the date. So we're going to grab the date for the second item. And we're going to just grab the time. And we're going to subtract that from the first date time. And that will sort that in descending order for us. So now we can take this and we can switch this over here invoke it really really importantly because it's not a computed property and we can give that a refresh so it looks like here uh we've got the right order which is good we've got a mix of these in here now ordered by the published date now another way that we can do this is just use a javascript getter so i can actually just put the get keyword in front of this function just here or this method just here and I can come up and get rid of the ability to invoke it. And this does actually continue to work. And you can see it's still listed in order of published date. So it's entirely up to you what you do. This technically isn't a computed property, but it acts like one. So uh, we can just use the get keyword in there. It's entirely up to you what you want to do. And that is pretty much it. A really, really simple one page personal RSS feeder written with Alpine JS.